Colonel Eileen Collins is one of the legends of the space program. She was the first woman to serve as a pilot of the space shuttle. She was the first woman to serve as a commander of the space shuttle. She has received the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Distinguished Flying Cross, Defense Meritorious Service Medal, and NASA's Outstanding Leadership Medal. She has logged 6,751 hours in 30 different aircraft, different types of aircraft, and 872 hours in space. Bill referred to the return to flight mission, the mission immediately following Columbia, when NASA needed a proven and experienced, a proven and experienced leader to command that mission, and they turned to Colonel Eileen Collins. I'm proud to introduce our next speaker, Eileen Collins. Good morning, and thank you, Steve. Thank you for bringing us all here together today on this important occasion. And of course, I want to thank Evelyn and Bill for your remarks, your important and moving remarks. You know, I think I have an important message, and and I hope that I can convey that today. But we're here today to honor and respect our space explorers, the STS-107 Columbia crew. But our purpose today is also to learn and to remember. Now I'm participating today mainly because I was a member of the Return to Flight team, and of course I'm participating today as an astronaut. And I've been asked to share whatever thoughts and experiences are appropriate. But I am humbled. And I know that whatever I say can't possibly describe the experience of five years ago and the difficult effort of returning the space shuttle to flight. I can't properly put it into words and I can't completely put it into words, but I'll try my best because again, our purpose here today is to honor and respect and to remember and learn. I chose to fly STS-114 and actually I chose twice to fly STS-114. The first time was in the summer of 2001 second time was in February of 2003. Why did I choose to do this? Why did my cr crew choose to fly this mission? Frankly, we did it to honor and respect and to remember and learn. It was our duty, and I never once thought it was time to quit. But let's back up for a minute. Of course, I can't come up here and speak for the Columbia crew, but I do think I can offer my feelings in general for the astronauts in general and the astronaut office in general. Why do we choose to fly? Why do we choose to do this mission? Well, I'm going to offer you two reasons. The first one is a love of flying and a desire to personally have the experience of space flight, to go up and experience being in microgravity, looking back at the Earth and looking at the oceans and the clouds, the continents, the deserts, the turquoise islands, and thinking about the history that took place on those locations on the Earth, and thinking about places you'd like to go visit someday. And those are all the fun side of having the experience of flying in space. But the second reason that we fly in space is we have a belief that exploration is important to our planet. No, we wake up every day thinking about all the work that goes along with it, which is studying, training, writing procedures, developing procedures, going in the simulator and practicing those procedures. And the days are long and it's hard and it's time away from your family, but we do it because we believe in the ultimate goal that comes out of what we do in the shuttle and space station programs. But these are very strong motivations. I just look at my case. As I was writing my remarks, I thought, well, but maybe I really need to think about why did I become an astronaut. I decided that I wanted to be an astronaut about the time of the Apollo fire, which was in 1967. I applied to the astronaut program after the Challenger accident. And then I flew my last mission after the Columbia accident. And these aren't just my experiences, but also the experiences of, of my peers and the choices that they made. And we do those, again, to honor and respect those that have preceded us and will remember and learn from them. I hesitated telling you this story, but what the heck, I'll, I'll tell it anyway. It's kind of a just a personal family story that I think I've only shared with one other uh, person 
in the media, but asking about my family. In December of, uh, by the way, my crew was supposed to launch on December, I'm sorry, on January 17th, which was the Columbia launch, but we delayed to March 6th for a lot of reasons. And uh, as we were approaching our launch date, my daughter was seven, and I thought, you know, somebody's going to say something to her about the Challenger accident. I wonder if she knows about that. So I asked her, and she said, no. I said, well, we need to have a talk because I wanted her to hear it from me and not somebody at school. So I went and got one of my space books, which had a picture of the Challenger crew and it had a picture of the accident, and I sat down and I, I told her about it. And I said, honey, this is never going to happen again. Mommy's going to be safe on her mission. And, and as I look back, maybe that was a little bit uh, presumptuous and arrogant of me to do that because after the uh, Columbia accident, I had some healing to do with my family. And, uh, you know, I was going to stay on STS-114 because that was my uh, that was my mission and I was going to stay with it. But I needed to convince my family that uh, the importance of space flight and that Mommy was doing something uh, that was important. And why do I tell that story? Well... I have personally changed very much due to my experiences after the accident and during the return to flight time frame. And I'd like to share some of the lessons that I have learned with you and some of the changes I went through. The first one is that I can't be too overconfident. Sometimes pilots are just overconfident. I think the older we get, the less confident we get. But I can't be too overconfident, not just one little bit. I've got to keep my eyes wide open. The second lesson I learned is that space flight is even more difficult than I originally believed, and it's more hazardous. And every day requires constant attention to detail. The third is I believe I can be a better listener. When I was in pilot training, my instructor used to say to me, Lieutenant Collins, the airplane is talking to you. Listen to it. And 25 years later, that still takes on meaning, it takes on more meaning. The fourth lesson, I believe I can be more humble. I be more humble to other people and to the system. Another favorite mantra of my instructor pilot, or my uh, instructor pilot was, Lieutenant Collins, respect the airplane. The fifth, I believe that I can be more creative. Back in basic pilot training, we were taught to follow the rules and the regulations, and we were graded on how well we did what was expected of us by the book. Later, when I attended test pilot school, I noticed a huge difference in the attitudes there. We were expected to be creative, and we were expected to look for places where problems could develop and to think of the possibilities, not look back at missed opportunities. The sixth was I, le I learned... A new dimension in forgiveness. I learned not to be too sensitive or judgmental. I also learned that in difficult or emotional times, people sometimes say things that are misunderstood or seem to be insensitive. But I think people are just trying to do the right thing and are just trying to help. And I had to realize that and learn how to forgive. And the last I don't know if I want to say this is a lesson learned, but this is more of an acknowledgement, an acknowledgement of the strong leadership that we had in the astronaut office and in our space program after the accident. First of all, I'm so proud of our direct supervisors in that time period. So in conclusion, I'd just like to share one last thought. Um, I believe that one of the most important things we're doing right now as a country, if not the most important thing, is leaving our planet and exploring space. And I'm so proud of our teams at uh, Kennedy Space Center here, Johnson Space Center, and across the country, all of our NASA and contractor people that work tirelessly through all these daily challenges of getting our shuttle launched, keeping our space station operating, building the space station, uh, beginning our constellation programs, as well as all the wonderful uh, science programs that we have going on throughout NASA. As you deal with the inevitable frustrations and surprises that come all the time in this business, Know that you're part of a bigger mission, the continuation of the human exploration of our world. And at some point in the future, people will leave our planet on a routine basis. And I believe 
that this type of exploration will not only serve to benefit our planet, but will make our quality of life better. Space exploration may even contribute to the survival of our planet. The STS-107 astronauts have been and continue to be a catalyst and a motivator for us to reach for our dreams through exploration. We will always honor and respect them, and we will always remember and learn. Thank you.